Good evening. Thank you. Thank you. It's a great day to be a beaver. I want you to turn to your program, page two. Um, athletics and OSU, Steve Priest, former beaver quarterback, retired NFL defensive back. I want to clarify that Steve is not going to make a uh, return to the NFL anytime soon. He just let me know that, so just for clarification's sake. A couple other updates. I'm going off script here, so don't get upset at me. Um, we talked about women's basketball finishing in second place. I don't think you know how great of an accomplishment that is. Four years ago, we came, we came this close into not playing at all during that season four years ago. And, and the job that Scott Ruick and his staff has done has just been remarkable. So it's going to cost me some money here to keep them, but that's okay. Baseball team's off to a great start, 9-3. and three. How about Pat Casey? And Sammy Harrison just won the 1650 um, freestyle at the conference meet. Now, that might not sound like a big deal, but that is the first time in the history of OSU that we've ever had an individual champion at the conference meet. First time ever, so. So we're here for the Martin Chavez Lifetime Achievement Award. It seems fitting that as we present the Martin Chavez Lifetime Achievement Award, we are creating an official link between leaders of two legendary Beavers football teams, two men who made history as student athletes and whose contributions to the university after graduation have been even greater. Martin Shaz was the captain of the 1942 Rose Bowl team, which was transplanted to Nor Durham, North Carolina because of the Pearl Harbor attack. Martin loved OSU and gave back in so many ways. He was the poster child for volunteer fundraising especially gifting kind. With his charming smile and gift of gab, potential donors rarely declined his request. Steve Priest, as we know, was the quarterback of the 67 Giant Killers, which went undefeated against number two Purdue, number two UCLA, and number one USC with O.J. Simpson. And I think your coach, DeAndros, was quoted after you beat Purdue to hell with number two, bring on number one. <laughs> like Martin, Steve loves OSU, has been a great ambassador over the years. With a great knowledge of the game, a face and a head of hair made for TV. <laughs> yes, I am jealous of that. It is no wonder he's had a 24-year run as an analyst for Beaver Sports. Whenever his alma mater called, whether it's emceeing events or serving on coaches' searches, He's always answered the ball. And this is where I'm going to go off script a little bit because i got to tell you a little bit about one of those coaching searches. So it started in 1999 when Mike Riley decided to take a four-year mission trip. <laughs> and after 48 hours of being on the road in a private airplane and, and getting delayed and getting rerouted from Portland to Seattle, we decided that we should probably talk to Dennis Erickson in the morning, 7 o'clock in the morning. And so Dennis showed up, brought him up to the suite. Now here's, here's Dennis, here's Mitch Barnhart, and Steve, and they're all huddled around in a suite, which is about as big as this podium, and they're talking about going vertical and the defensive back doing this. And so I ordered room service, and, and the room service is coming in, and, and the server comes in, and he's hearing the conversation, and he realizes he's in the middle of something pretty darn important. And the mouth drops, and all of a sudden the serving tray starts going forward, and that's about to drop. And Steve uses nine years of NFL experience to stop the food, stop the falling server, and save the day. It was awesome. It was awesome. <laughs> anyway, Steve, congratulations. Let's hear it for Steve Priest. Good evening, everybody. My name is Pat Reeser, and perhaps as uh, you thought about honoring Steve Priest tonight, you did the same thing I did, which was kind of take a trip back in time. And we saw clips on the, uh, uh, the video screen about that special game in 1967 against USC. And I wonder if you remember where you were on that day. I see a lot of head nodding, that's good. I know where I was. I wasn't at the game. Sorry, Steve. I was eight months plus pregnant, and so I made the decision to stay home. But my ear was glued to the radio. And what was so special about that was also the crowd. It was a 
game-changing crowd, it was also a record-breaking crowd. But in that crowd were two governors. Both governors, McCall and uh, Reagan, were there. And there was a wager. Their wager was a freshly caught salmon versus a hand-picked box of oranges. You might wonder why you have oranges on the table. Okay, now you know. But I bet those oranges were never so sweet. But Steve, we don't have any governors in the crowd tonight, nor do we, as a, a crowd, will we be able to make the roar that we would if we were in the stands. But we do represent Beaver Nation. And as such, we want to salute you for all of the contributions that you've made to the OSU athletics in the past and the present and all those that are going to come. And I invite all of you to grab an orange, re some of you have already eaten yours maybe. I saw someone had them in their mouth for teeth. But savor the flavor and the sweetness and I salute you, Steve. To Steve. <laughs> They leave something up here for everybody to say, and they didn't include my deal, you know. <laughs> First of all, uh, I want to thank the foundation uh, for the events this, this uh, weekend. It's been fabulous. And for the athletic department, uh, in every way, Bobby DeCarolis and his staff have always been wonderful to me and to Karen and me. Um, it, it's remarkable whether it's Beaver's, Beaver Club, uh, Beaver Sports Properties, or whatever, they've always been so great to me, and I'll get in a few minutes a little bit more about Bobby's story, if you will. Um, also, congratulations to, to Ken and Dwayne. Nobody is uh, more deserving and has have been a, as great an example as you guys have. Uh, our business school stands very proud if Dwayne really graduated from business school, after all. That. <laughs> the. Um, this is an honor that I really wasn't expecting early on. I, I always have thought it went to people farther down the line than I am, and it kind of scares me that what somebody's saying to me, uh, the retired football player, and I think it said retired analyst after that, but I couldn't quite figure it out. This is, uh, this is a situation that I, it came to mind a month ago when Oregon State had a, uh, a recruiting dinner, and John Hecker, great punter with the last, well, former Los Angeles Rams, St. Louis Rams, and Matt Moore, who plays for Miami. They're both great ex-Beavers. Um, I enjoy Matt. I enjoy talking to him, except for the fact that he makes more as a backup quarterback per game than I made in my entire nine years starting in the NFL. <laughs> That's disturbing, but it's time change. Johnny and Matt were the MCs of the recruiting dinner, and they stood up, and the first thing out of Johnny's mouth was, this is really ironic. A punter who walked on, didn't get a scholarship until his last two years of college, and a quarterback who went to UCLA, transferred to Oregon State, and we're the headliners at the Oregon State Recruiting Banquet. That was ironic. Well, it's a great segue into me receiving this award tonight because it's, it's for giving back. And I, I truly believe that um, I have not given back at all to Oregon State. For, as long as I can remember, I've received everything possible from Oregon State. They and you have been so incredibly good to me since 1965 when I was a young freshman coming to school at Oregon State. I was lucky enough when I came to town to, to play for great coaches. Uh, our coaches ended up in the NFL. Sam Bogosian has three Super Bowl rings. Rich Brooks, other than we should have hired him 35 or 40 years ago. And, Let's did let him go down the road a little bit. He was a marvelous coach. Bud Riley, Mike's dad, uh, wonderful, wonderful uh, coach. And, and th there were many on that staff. You heard Ed Connect, who I have to talk to after what he said earlier as well. Uh, these guys taught us the most important thing in what was college football then, and I still believe it's the most important thing. And that is you need to compete on a national level. 
You've got to believe that you can be the best team in the country, that you, you don't just try to win more than you lose, but you have to win. And I know that's what our staff believes. And I think that's what Beaver Nation really needs to believe. My teams at Oregon State, my teammates, were a group of guys who, from the top when I came in as a freshman to my senior uh, year and the kids under me, Oregon State gifted to me uh, a phenomenal cast of players that I was lucky enough to, to play with and captain with, from Mad Dog Abilovich to Bobby Grimm and, and All-American, last consensus All-American for, for 42 years until two years ago was John Didion, um, who was my center. Bill Enyard taken into the Hall of Fame. My class had seven guys drafted uh, out of that team, and we all played together. We didn't all think the same. But what our coaches taught us was that you don't have to think the same. You don't even have to like each other. But you have to trust each other and you have to love each other. And you'll win. And we did. We were in the top 25 all three years. You had to win it all to be in the Rose Bowl. And, and we finished second by a half game three straight years. We had a marvelous time. We stayed together. It's still a, a brother team. Only Sometimes we don't know who the other guy is or can't recognize him. But it's... It's something that was marvelous for us. Um, Oregon State gave me a wonderful education. I, I was a science major, as some of you know, and can't believe that, but um, I had a marvel. Oregon State's coaches, when you came in as a freshman, they, they had a coach at study table. All freshmen had to go to study table. It wasn't the myriad of advisors and so forth they have now, but it was a coach. And you showed up or you were gonna run the next day. And it was kind of a, uh, if you got, if you had good, good grades, if you got a three point, then you were off of study table. So, you know, it was kind of a risk reward, but it really worked. I happened to have a, a professor, uh, advisor, Darwin Reese. Some of you may have had him, a chemistry professor. Wonderful guy, and he, he told me what you had to do, and particularly he said, pay attention to the football season. You want to be able to, to play football. So you, you load up in the, in the winter and the spring so you can take 12, 14 hours in the fall get along. He also told me, and it was the best advice I, I think he gave me, was don't take physics until spring term your senior year after you've been admitted to grad school. <laughs> he really said that, and I didn't think he was serious until I found out I'd have to take that class over if I went on. It was, uh, o Oregon State did so much for me in the academic side. Uh, when I needed, and when I was playing professional football, years later and decided to move back to Portland. I called Coach Andros and I said, what, what should I do? I don't think I want to go back to dental school. Um, I'm still playing football and I need a job. In those days, you had to work in the off season. He arranged for me to have meetings in Portland with a bunch of bees. Uh, I went to work for a guy named R. R. Stevens Gilly, who many of you might know in Hawaii right now. Um, and Joe Wood was my mentor, who's also a beeve. And I worked for them for a few years and then I went out on my own and, and uh, another beaver, Bill Floberg, who many of you know from the foundation before. Bill and I have been partners for 32 years. Um, we, we develop, that's what I do. I have another job. I develop a <laughs> shopping center. Um, it, it, it's been a marvelous run and always uh, beavers involved. One of the greatest gifts to me is, is that Oregon State has uh, allowed me to represent them given me that gift for 24 seasons to do 22 of television and then the last couple of years mostly uh, mostly radio. It isn't as fun doing the radio and being a talking head as actually the medium I loved was talking about Oregon State football and about our program through football. Talking about plays on the field and describing to you people what was really happening out there. So you understood that Mike and his staff were doing the right things. It, uh, it, it's the fun way and it's exciting for someone who happened to play uh, himself. Uh, the, the football aspect and what Coach Riley has allowed me to do and the coaches before him as well um, for these years has become a part of the football family. I have had coaches on game days meeting with me when I was going to do television telling me little things to look for, but to please keep my mouth shut before the play happened. Um, they would work with me. They would um, explain situations. I've called Mike and said, just tell me 
why you did this or something. And, and he gives me a real reason, which I can assure you in, at any level, they don't necessarily do that. Um, it's, it's been something that is more than special to me and, and keeps our teammates together because Mike and his staff always tell us to come back. I guess the, the greatest gift Oregon State gave me uh, as, a, as a player and a former player and an analyst um, was what Bobby D went into a little bit, and that was the ability and, and the opportunity to be involved in changing our programs uh, and be on three search committees, like Dwayne said he was. Um, when, when Paul Risser came, became president of Oregon State, he knew and felt, he, he ran studies, in fact, his first year, to determine that um, Oregon State's enrollment was actually dropping. And part of the reason, when he interviewed college or high school students in a survey, was that we were losers. And the biggest reason was the football team. We'd lost for then 26 years. And Paul called uh, me in after a season of listening to meet Gab and called Bob Grimm in, who was another teammate of mine, a great player, who had done the radio for many years. And he, took, he called me up and said, would you come down to Corvallis? And, and I, uh, I came down. I uh, visited with Paul. He took six pages of legal-sized notes about football and what the wishbone offense was doing right, what it was doing wrong, and why you couldn't do it or you could do it in today's world. Um, about three weeks later, after he'd met with Bobby too, he called us and he says, we're going we're gonna to change things here. We're going to start winning. We're going to get a new coach at the end of the season, and soon after that he fired the coach, and we're going to make some things happen. Um, Paul and, and Bob Grimm and I, and um, our then athletic director, uh, set out to find coaches. And I can tell you, and Mike can really attest, there weren't a lot of people that wanted to come to Corvallis after 26 years of losing seasons. And we, we were looking for some people on staff. We had some good candidates. They were on defense, though. Rocky Long, Brady Hoke at Michigan now, Bronco Mendenhall. But they weren't ready to be head coaches. And we wanted somebody who plays offense to come in. And we, we knew of and we found Mike, who was an offensive uh, coordinator at SC. We knew he knew Corvallis. He was from a great bloodline in his family and, and played for Paul Bear Bryant and had been under some great coaches. Knew what he was doing and we twisted his arm and beat him up, uh, played the Corvallis card. I mean, it was just, it was kind of sickening actually. But we, we got he and D to come aboard. Um, and in two years, they changed our program. We didn't have that winning season, but we were close. And if those of you remember the double overtime and Kenny Simonton scoring and, and the craziness that surrounded it. And, and incidentally, Kenny Symington is will be taken into the Oregon State or Oregon State of Oregon Sports Hall of Fame this next week, joining uh, my giant killers and a number of other beeves who have had the pleasure of being involved. That's quite an honor for Oregon State to have uh, State of Oregon inductees like that. So Mike came to Oregon State and changed our culture. And when Mike left, uh, it, it was a sad day for me, but uh, you know, also a pleasing day that he brought us so far. And when Dennis dropped into our lap, and I remember that what Bob said entirely, but I also remember that after, after the meeting with Dennis, we went out and we, Mitch and, and Bobby and I reconnoitered, and, and I said, did anybody notice anything special about Dennis? And both guys, absolutely. What was it? He had a black sock and a blue sock. That was true. We howled. In fact, I told Dennis about that for about three seasons. Uh, he came to work for us and took us to yet another level. The Beavers went to the Fiesta Bowl. You all remember those years. Um, we, were, we, we really hit some new heights there, and it was wonderful. Um, and then Dennis left. And I was lucky enough by, again, Bobby D, to be chosen. We had two new athletic folks with Bobby at the time. They'd just come in. Kevin Anderson and Todd, and they weren't familiar with Corvallis and the culture and, and what you have to know to be a football coach or any kind of coach in Corvallis and who you recruit, how you have to find these kids, the marvelous way you have to dig them out and reteach them and recoach them. Um, and we had, set, by then, we had candidates at our ears, and we interviewed a number of them, and Mike was one that we called, uh, I think Bobby called him. And when we interviewed Mike, I remember at the end of the day, uh, 
it was very simple. Uh, Bobby said, we hired this man once. He, he's done nothing but gotten better and better, and he's gotten more experienced. Why in the world wouldn't we hire him again? We hired Mike. Since 2000, which is Dennis's last year, I guess, and, and since Mike, we've had this third best record in the Pac-12 for wins. Um, we do it with less money and a lot of different things than the best team that money can buy down the way. Um, we, we do it the right way at Oregon State. To be a part of changing of our culture and getting to a win winning football program is probably the greatest gift that Oregon State gave me, to be a part of that. I would be remiss if I didn't mention one other situation before I leave, and that's that I, I have to thank my executive director producer for all these years on television, the lady that has been in the, with the wind and the snow coming in before they had windows at Husky Stadium. Um, she has held my coat over my head so I could do beaver all access and not, and not get uh, wet before they started filming as uh, she collects data for me so I can interview Mike at the end of the day. I don't remember all that stuff. Um, she even tells me uh, sometimes, she tells me who wins so I can vote for the Harris Bowl. In fact, a lot of times she tells me who to vote for. Um, <laughs> my love of my life, Karen, my wife. So I'm, I'm sorry I strung this out, but uh, Oregon State has been good to me, great to me. They've given all they could give to me for the last 40, 50 years, and I appreciate it. Uh, love being a beeve, and go beeves. Thank you.